Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Prince Harry, the Duke of Sussex. Good evening, NFL. Good Northern Harry. <laughs> I can't wait to get into this one. Prince Harry makes gag-filled speech at NFL Awards in Vegas, but fails to mention cancer-stricken father Charles after rushing back to the US from 45-minute meeting with the King in the UK. All right, let's not let emotions run away with us, eh, Daily Mail? Mm. Uh, let's break this story down in, uh, in the way we always do here on The Daniel Boland Show, with uh, logic and reason and balance and nuance. <laughs> Oh, Daniel Bullen, this is a heavy hitter. Do you guys know who this is? Good evening, NFL. Okay, so a lot of people are very unhappy with Prince Harry this week. Again. How many of us feel battered? And people are angry with Harry this time because, as I'm sure you all know, King Charles has been diagnosed with cancer. Now, they're not blaming him directly for the cancer, are they? We're not doing that, are we? The, um, with His Majesty the King, that I haven't heard discussed so far. Firstly, could the stress of having to sort out the Harry situation over the last two years have contributed to his illness? Because we know that stress does contribute to illness. Stress can give you heart attacks. Stress can give you nervous conditions. And I believe if you ask top doctors, they'll say, yes, it could be responsible for at least enhancing the king's, you know, anxiety. And that anxiety in itself might have worked its way physically into his body. I mean, the more you worry about things in life, you do inherit medical conditions without a shadow of a doubt. Like, for instance, heart. Who's to say that can't, you know, affect you in other areas of your body with other diseases? Homer sleeps nude in an oxygen tent, which he believes gives him sexual powers. Ah, GB News. They're a hit and miss bunch, aren't they? More miss than hit recently, though, I would say. Mike Parry, though. Mike Parry of GB News. He's a real uh, Titanic of modern journalism, not just for his size, but uh, for the unfathomable depths to which he's willing to sink. Eh? Just when you think there isn't a barrel left to scrape the bottom of, in shuffles <laughs> Mike Parry of GB News, uh, with all of the uh, demeanour and charisma of an 11-year-old Labrador retriever, bloated, tired, confused plodding towards its food bowl. It's not even hungry anymore, it's just inertia at this point. Resistance to change, you know. He keeps grifting, but he's not even sure why anymore. Uh, I've got to get more likes, I've got to get engagement, I don't know. Yeah. <sighs> Labrador Retrievers only get about 12, 13 years best, Mike. It's all very well us uh, sneering at Harry, hmm? uh, but uh, at least he came over, you know, he, he got on the first private jet he could afford, and he was in England as quick as he could, and uh, as quick as he could be. And yeah, all right, he was only with King Charles, he was only with his father for a few minutes, according to most sources, but uh, at least he was there, you know, it's a stressful thing, he's got a lot of things he needs to be doing, he's got a lot of places he needs to be, as we will see in today's video. Uh, he's got a lot of engagements, and uh, he's a busy man. All right, and he still found time for his uh, cancer-stricken father. All right, uh, I'd like to see all of you, eh, organizing seven vehicle convoys to move from one building to another. <laughs> A seal opera. Look at him. It, it, it really took it out of him. He was pooped at the end of that trip. It's an, it's an honor to be uh, to be with you all tonight. I really love <laughs> I really love how you uh, you stole rugby from us. Oh Jesus. Uh, look, uh, 
I know Harry's not a comedian, right? He's not a professional comedian. Not yet. Uh, but he's... Uh, can we just, as, as a society, right? UK and, uh, and, and the US. Can we come together and, and, and realise that uh, we must get past this shtick of... Uh, oh, you guys say... <laughs> sidewalk! <laughs> it's... Uh, I feel like we should have. I did. Uh, we should have got past that by now. I feel like we went through that maybe at the beginning of the 90s with Hugh Grant, right? Uh, and uh, we get it, okay. Uh, pavement, diapers, whatever, who cares, okay? It's, it's not funny. Uh, it's like talking about uh, aeroplane food, or should I say airplane food? It's just, there's nothing to, uh, it's gone, it's done, all right? We get it. All right. Um, my God, if uh, if Mike Parry has the personality of a of an aging Labrador Retriever, then uh, Harry has the personality of a chemically castrated laboratory beagle. I really love how you uh, you stole rugby from us, and <laughs> and you made it your own. Instead of passing it backwards, just pass it forwards. Why not wear pads and a helmet? They do wear pads and helmets, Harry. Your observational skills are on point. Uh, it's just the comedy you need to add now. For example, there, we're doing the American English thing. We're talking about the differences. We're talking about pads, right? There's, there's a missed opportunity to mention uh, the cup that they wear to protect their genitals. You never normally miss an opportunity to talk about your cock, Harry. Uh, you know, I, you could have said something like, Oh, or oh, oh, what about the cup? Because you're afraid to call it a cock piece, you fucking idiot prudes. I believe it's called a cod piece, Harry. Is it? No wonder it smells funny. See, I can write jokes. I can write jokes. That's hilarious. I hate jokes. It makes me feel sick. I feel dirty. I feel like a big fat Mike Perry. Perry. Of course, have an offense and defense. That makes sense. And why not take a breather every 15 seconds? <laughs> and you know what? Instead of a 10-month season, let's just make it 18 weeks. Genius. Oh, that could be a poster for Black History Month right there, couldn't it? I would caption the uh, the poster. What the hell are you talking about? God damn, this guy dumb. All kidding aside, what you guys do on and off the field is truly remarkable. You are role models for millions in the way you carry yourselves and in the way you give back. This final award, the highest honour, is all about serving your community. And there's one special man we'd like to pay tribute to now. A player who goes above and beyond and whose extraordinary commitment to helping others is a reflection of his own story. Oh, please, another professional athlete with a sob story. Let me guess, life was tough, was it, growing up? You were poor, were you? Did you run away from home? Are you a rent boy and everything? I mean, God bless them, all these poor kids that get out of the ghetto through their sport, right? Um, but at some point, we do have to realise that they are at an advantage. Most top athletes, okay, uh, come from poverty. Uh, because they put all their eggs into one basket. They are allured by the shiny objects, the Lamborghinis, the Instagram models. Uh, <laughs> whereas rich kids, they don't... Uh, it's a pastime, it's a hobby. They don't need any of that stuff. They're just there to have fun. If anything, I'm more impressed by the, uh, the Andrea Pirlo's of this world, uh, who grow up with loads of money, and they're still better than all the poor kids. Please welcome the Walter Payton NFL Man of the Year, Cam the Man Haywood. Oh man. Man. Prince freaking Harry. <laughs> man, I'm uh. I'm in shock. That's, that's Prince Harry. Uh. 
Yes, that's Prince freaking Harry. It sure is. Anyway, yeah, the uh, big issue that most people seem to have is the uh, is the optics, really. And I understand it looks bad. Uh, Harry sort of coming over for an express visit, seeing his dad for 20 minutes and then heading off back to Vegas uh, to hand out one of these strange awards. But that, to me, is the real uh, thing that I focus on. Uh, <laughs> I'm worried about Harry and Meghan. Uh, <laughs> they, do they have other projects in the pipeline because I just worry that this handing out and receiving awards every other month or something like that that's like a, that seems like a career that has a very short shelf life do Harry and Meghan have other projects in the pipeline are they gonna do more Netflix stuff please God let them do more <laughs> Netflix stuff uh, why is Harry presenting an award for an NFL thing uh, do NFL fans, do they, do they just love Prince Harry? Uh, I don't know. All I'm saying is I just don't see where they're going. Okay? Um, but I, I can't wait to find out. This might be a little bit hard for me. Uh, when I talk about my family, I talk about my mom. When my dad passed away... I like fucking... They're all in pain. Well, my fucking ears are in pain. Fucking hearing your fucking voice, you twat.